All right, so I am working on this proof. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of the behind the scenes on how I put a proof together. Our first page is always our overlay page. And then from our overlay, I then move it into all its individual pages. I also have a habit of reusing old proofs. This is for another client that we're working on right now. And I just copy over her proof and start on top of it. That way all my pages are laid out the way I want them to. It's basically just a template. Right, and I just move it from one client to the next. Being very careful to copy it so I don't accidentally overwrite the file, which I've definitely done. All right, so let's walk through this a little bit. Our first thing that I always do is our overlay in the very beginning. There's a few changes I wanna make real quick. I think my postage stamps aren't showing right here, so I'm gonna move a few things around here from my overall layout. I'm gonna bring my invitation forward since it obviously needs to be on top of the overlay, which is less important. Then I have my reply card down here, my reply card envelope, envelope liner. Um, I have the back of the envelope, front of the envelope, and my envelope liner. I do have one more small little card in here that I actually need to check the dimensions of, and then I'm going to drop another, another one in here and rearrange these guys accordingly. Um, the other thing I'm going to use this overview for before I start copying these pieces and dropping them into their individual pages for the client to proof is I want to make sure that my design looks good. I've made a few adjustments. I noticed that the artwork on the back of my envelope liner was a little off. It was a little too close to my edges, so I made that adjustment real quick. But the other adjustment I want to make is to my reply envelope. So I'm going to pop over here to my working file, my envelope. Uh, I feel like this artwork is a little bit high. There's this gap in between. Also, I need to put a postage stamp on here. So I'm gonna kind of mess around with my artwork. And I think I just move my artwork down a smidge. And then all I have to do is hit save. And then over here, if I open up my links, it's gonna tell me that, oh, hey, this has been changed. It'll automatically drop it down for me. Um, the other thing I need to do is pull my postage stamp. So I'm gonna pull that off of my mailing envelope and we're gonna be using this little guy down here. <laughs> Honestly, I usually have these much more cleaned up than I do right now, shame on me. But as long as I have them grouped with their backgrounds off, I don't really mind it, wrong one. But I haven't cleaned that file up yet. So I'm going to copy this over to my reply envelope. And this is already to scale, so I know that's how big that guy is. Hit save, pop over here, update that file. There we go. Other than that, I don't see any major design things that I'm going to want to change. Um, I will have that additional card here momentarily. Oh, actually, we're missing a reception card too. Hello. So we'll do some moving around. Um, but because I went off of this proof for this client, they did not have a reception card. So I didn't have something to just drop on here. So I completely forgot about it. Uh, we'll do that in just a second. So first things first, I'm going to my invitations on here. And then once I am not talking, I'm going to go through all of my descriptions and make sure that those are all correct, but doing that while talking is not a good idea. Um, I can also do it this way if I really wanted to. I can drop in my reply card. I do need to change my background color. My keyboard and my mouse are very far apart. It's making this difficult. There we go. So I have that color swatched. So 
so I don't have to guess at what color it is. I love that my artwork was randomly upside down. That's fantastic. So that's the other way we can do it. I can just copy and paste this guy from here though. Should we put a mailing envelope or a reply envelope? Too far, too far. Jeez. Reply. So I'm gonna copy these guys here. I do both my envelope liners on an 8.5 by 11 um, file, which I'll actually show you in just a second. Come on. So I always have to scale up my reply, oop, too far, my reply envelopes. Photoshop, and I'll show you that real quick. So I have two different envelope liner files. I have one for a proof and one that lives in the artwork file. So before I ever start any client proofing or design work, I always start with the artwork file. Um, this is big, this is 25 by 25, uh, 24, 24 by 24. It's what I scan the entire original artwork piece into, this guy right here. And then I have all my clipped apart pieces. I actually have a whole other folder over here that not all my pieces are turned on. I have some clusters. Um, I have the horizon artwork here. And then from here, this is where I pull for all of my different design files. So I'm not cleaning up artwork more than once. I clean it up here and only here. And then as I move it around to other files, everything is ready to go. So I also have, you can see my line here. That's my envelope liner line. So obviously these two are my envelope liners right here. And I have them grouped over here to the right. These two, I'm not gonna print from a 24 by 24 inch file. That's just nuts. And I also don't want to pull a file this big into my design proof over here. Um, one is just going to slow everything down, and two, with all the layers of the artwork, is really going to slow everything down, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to pull it over to a separate file that I call Envelope Liner for Proof Monday. My doggo is coming over to visit us right now. Hi, sweetie. Everybody want to say hi to Monday. Hi, Bubbers. Sit. Sit. She has woken up from her morning nap. Good girl. She's getting ready for her afternoon nap with a treat. Gentle, gentle. Have an gentle. apple. It's like a water buffalo walking through the room. Anyhow. Um, so this is what I'm going to actually use for a print file. It's not what I'm going to use for a print file right now because obviously I would do this as a two up and then this guy's a one up. But I've taken my cut lines off so I can drop it into the proof. The other thing I do is when I print them, I'm also not going to print everything with my cut lines on because I'm going to use a stack cutter. And if I use a stack cutter and it moves even just a teeny tiny bit, my lines are going to show. So what I do is however many, oops, however many stacks I'm going to cut, that's how many I print with a line. I usually do these in two or three groupings. I'm 
this is a smaller wedding, so I'll just do this in one. So I will print one with a cut line and all the other ones without a cut line, just in case there's any movement with the cutter, um, I don't end up with that line showing. So that file is what I use to drop into these envelope liners here in my proof, rather than the artwork file that's just massive. I'm gonna get rid of that guy. Now I could have just dropped the artwork on top of that, but I could just copy paste it. Copy pasta. Good girl, Mindy. Look at this good girl. Hi. Oh, you've got slobber on your nose. Mm, yum. Um, this overlay, obviously this is not rendered fully because this is not the actual proof, um, it has some texture to it. Let me grab the paper real quick and I'll show you. The paper I'm using for this is this guy here. This is Kuzo paper. Kuzo? I always want to say Kudzo, but that's not correct. Um, that we're going to print on. So I did pull the texture from the manufacturer's website. So it's there, it kind of shows. It's not quite as crinkly as I would like, but that's okay. What do we have next? So next we have our invitation overlaid with our um, overlay. So you can kind of see how the two of them go together, which I don't always do, but if I have an overlay that has some sort of design window in it, I will usually layer them together. So you can see what they look like layered. Um, in the last case of um, the piece I just deleted, they were designed to stack. So it made sense to put them one on top of the other. Um, the other thing I will include in this is if I have a ribbon, which I will have, or a wax seal, then I will include it on this to show how it's going to sit on top of the entire piece. So that Kuzo paper, Kuzo, Kuzo, I always say it wrong, um, it's not very opaque at all, or uh, transparent at all, it's completely opaque. So it's not going to show the invitation through it. I will probably just delete this spread. All right, next up we got our mailing envelope. actually is missing some artwork on here. Let's fix that first. is actually what it's going to look like open because obviously it's going to show the printed artwork that's on the back of the invitation or the back of the envelope.
All right, so I'm going to drop in a few more pages because we also have our reception card and we've got a little tiny detail card we need to add as well. You can my envelope got a little off there. And uh, I'm going to drop those pages in, but I'm going to do those off camera where it's a little bit easier to think. And I'm going to go through and do all my descriptions. Um, I'm going to export this real quick so you can see what an export looks like. Before I make all those changes, then if you do follow me on Instagram at Design House of Moira, I will show the final proof before I send it to a client. I always habitually print it out first and make sure there are no mistakes and it definitely helps me to see it printed on paper. So we started doing digital proofs like this maybe four or five years ago. Before that we did each individual file separately and I felt like it was difficult for a client to envision what the whole suite looked like in this capacity where it's all laid out next to each other. So we started doing proofs like this. Um, Karen has always done our proofs, so I'm not nearly as quick as she is. She's much faster. Uh, so this will be the page that we get rid of here because we don't need it. I'll probably just switch it to the reception page. Alright, no major, major changes right here. I'm going to check the scale on these two because I want the artwork to either be the same scale or not be the same scale. And these are pretty close. I'm probably going to make this guy appear bigger. That's one of those advantages of checking the proof to make sure it looks correct. Alright, if you guys want to know more information about how I created this proof, any of the shortcuts I use, um, because I do not have keystroke on here so you can't see what keys I'm hitting with shortcuts. Um, we do offer a course, Designing a Digital Proof, through Design House Prep School that is super affordable and you can check that out. I will put the link in the comments. As always, if you guys have questions, um, please leave a comment and I can get back to you on that. Or shoot me a message on Instagram and I can go over whatever questions you guys have for procedural wise or best practices. Thanks for watching.